Hello everyone. <laughs> Working out some kinks here. Um, this is Joy Morin. Thanks so much for joining and for watching this. Wow, I see a bunch of you on. Susan Hong, hello. Liz, hello. Um, Eldelier, hello. There's seven of you on. Wow, Susan, my other Susan friend. <laughs> Thank you all for joining. Um, all right, let me see if I can flip this me. I am new at this and totally just trying to figure out this technology here today. Um, so <laughs> yes, th thank you for the, the comments. I can see what you're writing here. Um, this is my first Periscope. Um, so my name is Joy Morin, if you don't know me, and I am a piano teacher in Ohio and a blogger at colorinmypiano.com. So um, I thought I would experiment with this new platform as a way to try to um, create some Monday blog posts that um, allow us to talk about different aspects of piano teaching. So just short conversations about different things. And as you might have saw at the beginning, um, today I'd like to talk about how to organize your music library. It's just kind of a fun topic to get us started today. Um, so um, yeah, be but before I get started on the um, talking about the music library, um, I just wanted to let you know, in case this is the first time you're using Periscope as well, that um, you can um, do a few things to interact during a Periscope, if you're watching from Periscope. Um, the first thing you can do is touch the screen to leave some hearts. So you'll see these little hearts start to come up kind of on the right hand side. And that just means that you like, you know, whatever you're, you're seeing and watching right now. So thanks for those hearts. Um, the other thing that you can do is type in comments or questions at any time, just um, typing right in on your phone. Um, and so I appreciate hearing from you and hearing your interactions and um, maybe I'll ask some questions at some point. Um, and then the other thing that you can do if you're watching from Periscope is to share this. So if you're interested in sharing this with your Facebook friends or Twitter followers, you can do that. Um, if you're on an iOS device, you can swipe from the left and you'll see the share thing. And if you're on an Android, you can swipe from the bottom. Um, so if you don't mind right now, if you could go ahead and um, type in and tell us where you're from. It would be really neat to see um, where everybody's from who's joining us here today on the live Periscope. Um, so feel free to go ahead and do that. And um, um, I, I guess I'll mention also right now that um, um, my um, on my blog, colorinmypiano.com, I've created a page. Oh, we've got, oh, this is so cool. Texas, we've got New York. Um, thank you for putting that in. Um, on my blog, I've added a new page, um, San Antonio, Texas. Thank you, Susan. Um, there's a page at colorinmypiano.com slash live, and I would really like to see, there's another Ohio, my good friend Susan, thank you. Um, I'd love to hear suggestions from you about what you think um, we could talk about in these periscopes. I'd really love to have your ideas. I have some ideas too, um, but I'd love to um, hear that from you as well. So please do visit colorinmypiano.com slash live, and you'll see there um, where you can click through and share your ideas. Um, so I really appreciate that. Um, so thanks again for watching everyone. Um, let's go ahead and get started about organizing a music library and basically I'm just going to show you how mine is organized um, and you, please feel free to comment in and tell us about your music library too. So I'm going to flip around the camera here. All right, there we go. Okay, so <laughs> this is my music library. Um, these bookcases are um, bookcases that I got at Ikea. It's the Besta line, and I'm not so sure that these bookcases are available anymore, but there's probably other bookcases that are similar. Um, so um, anyway, um, my music library is not always this or well organized, and I'm sure you guys maybe can relate. Um, give me some hearts if you can relate to this. <laughs> but I did get organized just for today for you guys. <laughs> so thanks for those hearts. Um, so basically how I've organized my music library is um, mostly it's organized sort of by genre into sections um, and sometimes organized further within that. Um, so first of all, I guess I'll just start over here on the left. So on this shelf I have um, kind of teacher, piano teacher resources. So there's like um, syllabuses, um, like the, the Royal Conservatory syllabus, or um, I've got um, um, like teacher guide books um, for different piano methods out there. I've got a few binders. There's a binder that has student information forms in it. 
Um, I've got manuscript paper on the shelf, just a kind of a variety of different things um, on this shelf. Um, so that's kind of a catch-all. Um, and then this is probably the largest section here on this shelf that I have here. Um, so this is where um, I have advanced level classical repertoire organized by the composer's last name. So it starts with Bach, it goes on to Beethoven and Chopin and so on, and it kind of goes on to over in this section. Um, and I found it helpful to have the advanced repertoire be separate from the student level stuff, which I'll show you pretty soon. Um, thanks if you're just joining us and watching. Um, we're talking about organizing your music library today. Um, so this last um, little magazine holder here on the side is um, student level pop music, which just is there because it fits. <laughs> I have more advanced pop music um, down below. Um, Okay, and then I'll keep going. On this shelf is where I keep some of the brand new books that I have that I could give out to students. So there's certain things that I try to keep on hand so that if I get a new student um, or if it's just something I use frequently, um, I like to have those new copies right on hand. Um, so these are piano method books. Some of you might recognize the colors of the, um, the Faber um, Piano Adventures books. And there's also um, lots of other methods on this shelf. Um, succeeding at the piano, uh, Celebrate Piano, um, Piano Safari, there's lots of different things here. Um, I also have um, theory books for students and adult um, level method books on the very end there. Um, so that's what that shelf is. Um, I'm gonna go straight down. And next we have, these are um, anthologies. So these are books of classical music, but rather than, you know, they can't be organized by composer because of the fact that they're anthologies, so they have many composers in these books. So um, first of all, you can see the really colorful books on the end. Those are the um, Royal Conservatory Celebration Series, which um, I've been getting into more in my teaching and trying to incorporate those more. Um, so I really like the, especially the A and the B book from the Celebration Series. Um, I think those are really great books for students. Um, and then there's lots of other anthologies. Um, trying to think of some favorites. I really like the Jane McGraw Classics Alive. If any of you know that book, maybe you can leave a comment or, or um, give me some hearts here. Um, that's that's a really great book, Classics Alive, um, and it's um, it, it's um, like intermediate level repertoire, and the book is um, pretty thick, so it's a great value. So I really like that. And there's also, I've got um, Journey Through the Classics, there's Music for Millions books, there's the Favor Piano Adventures books, um, the Festival Collection, um, different books like that um, that are good for students uh, with their first classical type repertoire. Okay, let's keep moving. Uh, over here, there's a few more anthologies in this section, but these are ones that are specific to a time period. So, for example, um, I think um, as an example, there's this new... There's these new Shermer um, performance editions. These are, um, there we go. I've got this at a conference, so I haven't tried it yet, but this is like a, a Shermer performance edition um, for the classical era. And I've got some other anthologies that are sonatinas for students. Um, so those types of books are organized in this next section here. Um, you can say hello to my little kitty here. <laughs> Do you guys have pets? This is Kira. <laughs> so she's hanging out with us this morning. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so that's one of my two cats. The other cat I put away in the other room because I knew she would be in the way. Um, and I didn't think that my shy cat would also come out, but apparently she wants to say hello. So <laughs> that's the beauty of, of this being live, right? Um, okay. So next I have a couple of magazine holders. This is where I keep um, sheet music, just loose um, individual pieces of sheet music. And I, I have more than I think I'd normally keep on hand right now. Um, a lot of my music library is um, old books, used books that I've gotten from other teachers that are retiring or, or cutting back. Um, and I also love to, to shop at thrift stores and garage sales, so I've collected a lot of things that way for, for very cheap. Um, so anyway, um, I think a bunch of these intermediate level sheet musics came from the um, my when I was in grad school. Central Michigan University was kind of cutting back on their piano pedagogy library and um, clearing out some older things for some newer things. So I, I got a whole bunch of free music that way. Um, but anyway, I do try to keep um, a selection of uh, sheet music on hand. Um, like for recital time or for a performance, I think it's fun to have um, something, a special new piece for the student to pick out for an event like that. 
Um, so as I mentioned earlier, this is more advanced pop music, um, so I, I might play some of the stuff for weddings or different things, or students sometimes are interested in that stuff. Um, okay, and then I have a small magazine holder for jazz and blues and ragtime music. Um, now this section is a lot like the um, the shelf above, so it's it's classical composers organized by the last name alphabetically, but this is now student level stuff. So this would be, you know, um, Clementi Sonatinas, uh, Schumann album for the young, um, Bartok children's pieces, um, you know, that sort of thing. Just student level stuff. Um, it's mostly classical composers, although um, I do I have mixed into here also. Um, living composers too, different pedagogical composers. Um, so that's what that shelf is. Um, and then the, the last shelf on this level over here, this is kind of a, a random mix again of teacher resources. So this is music history things and um, students for teaching uh, or uh, materials for teaching like early childhood you know, young ages. Um, so you, some of you might recognize these really colorful folders here. Those are my um, Music History Lab books, uh, which is a curriculum I sell on my blog. Um, so anyway, just resources like that that you might use for uh, music history lessons for a group class. Okay, down to the bottom here. This is my shelf of hymn arrangements. Um, I love to play hymn arrangements, so I have a pretty big shelf of that. Um, so this is the kind of music you would use for church services and things like that. Um, some of these books were um, old books that I got from my grandma. Uh, when she passed away. So some of those are that, and then some of them are student level um, hymn arrangements. So let's say hello to Kira again, <laughs> there she is. She's purring up a storm. Um, this is music for, thanks for those hearts guys. <laughs> These, this is music that I use for weddings. So that kind of fits into that category somewhat as well. All right, so this shelf is where I keep um, other teaching resources for students. So first I have sight reading books. Um, a lot of these I've gotten used um, or, or they were given to me. Um, I don't generally give every student a sight reading book um, because I like to sight read using... Um, um, oh, Amy says that she thinks it's neat having music from grandma. I have a big box too. Yes. <laughs> yes, it's nice to have that um, passed on and it means a lot. Um, so sight reading music, you know, I don't, I don't really think sight reading has to be taught only through a book that has the word sight reading on the cover because really you can use any music for sight reading. Um, so, but I do like to keep a section of those types of books here. Um, it comes in handy, for example, with a um, transfer student who comes in if I want to see what their sight reading is like. It's nice to be able to just grab um, a couple levels and have them try some things. Um, but if a student, you know, does struggle with sight reading for whatever reason, um, I definitely, you know, wouldn't hesitate to buy them um, a dedicated book for that. Um, okay, and then these other magazine holders are just small sections. These are um, improv and composition books, and then um, these are score reading books that <laughs> came from college studies, so those are fun. And then, <laughs> then I have some technique books, um, so these are like Hannon, uh, Schmidt exercises, things like that. And here's Kira again. <laughs> There's um, a couple of books between here that are um, kind of right between there, you can barely see, but th this is music for one hand. So for recital time, that a student um, broke her arm. So we found um, just kind of a, a simple patterned piece that she was able to learn in a couple of weeks that still made her sound really good. Um, and then the last magazine holder has some different um, theory resources and rhythm books and things like that. Um, so that's kind of a shelf with just random teaching resources. Um, okay, this is all ensemble music. So these, these would be um, piano duet books. Um, and um, the ones in the magazine holder are trios, uh, so three people at one piano. Um, some of these books are for two pianos, four hands, um, and these are somewhat organized. Like some, these, uh, I think the first set here are the ones organized by the composer's last name, and some of these are hymn books um, that are duet. Um, and then at the very end, though, this is my my um, more frequently used section here. Those are um, duet books that are um, like more advanced level for a teacher and then um, the other part of the duet is very simple for a student to play. So I would love to have students learn to sight read by using these types of duets. Um, so um, as an example, maybe I'll just pull one out here. Um, I, uh, the Masterwork Classics duets, um, maybe you're familiar with Masterwork Classics but you didn't know they had the duet series. Well this is fairly new. 
Um, so these are um, pretty nice. There's the one side that is clearly more advanced for um, a more advanced student or for the teacher to use. And then there's um, easier an easier part um, for the student to be able to play. So like the level one book, um, everything's pretty much five finger patterns, you know, so you can kind of tell the student that and make sure they know what key they're playing in. And it works really great to um, sight read duets like that. So um, I have a whole blog post about using duets for sight reading with more book recommendations. So if you go to colorinmypiano.com, you can just enter in the search bar, um, sight reading and then duets. And I'm sure that post will come right up for you if you're interested. Okay, we're down to the last section here. Um, so this shelf is full of different piano methods. Now, I, I know I already have piano methods up here, but I try to keep, um, these, these are all the brand new books that I could give to a student on, you know, any time. And these are older books. I have lots of old favorite books that I've collected at garage sales and things, and I like to have these for my reference. So if a student forgets their books, then I have, oh, no problem, I have my own copy. <laughs> um, so those are just books I've gotten really cheap and just keep on hand. And there's lots of other really old piano methods in here. I love to collect old piano methods and just look at how they're structured and what the pedagogy is behind them. And I always learn something new in those types of books. Um, so that's kind of what this shelf is. It's just lots of old um, piano methods that I like to keep around. Um, so basically that's kind of how my music library looks. Um, it's probably bigger than I would like it to be, but I'm sure maybe some of you guys can relate to that problem of collecting too many books. <laughs> um, I, I do have a few other stacks along the top um, in this bookcase, um, which I really like to be able to um, put some other things. If, if I pull, pull out a book with a student in mind, then I put it in a pile and put a post-it note on the cover with their name on it so that I know who it's for. Um, and then I have a couple of piles here for music that I'm working on, whether it's solo rep or if it's, um, you know, do uh, uh, collaborative repertoire to play with someone else. Um, so having these little piles are kind of helpful too, so that I don't have piles elsewhere, you know, in the room in my studio. Um, so let me turn. Okay. Um, so that was that's what I thought we would talk about for my first little Periscope, just for kind of something fun and easy to talk about. Um, so um, thanks so much again for watching. Um, Liz says, I have an entire basement wall dedicated to music like this. <laughs> so I'm not the only one maybe who has uh, kind of an overload of music. I, I will admit then too, Liz, since you, you know, admitted that, I will admit that I have another little closet kind of around the room, uh, around the corner from this room that has um, more books in it. And that's actually where the Christmas music is. and. I don't even know, some other old method books maybe, and I think I have some old textbooks from like um, college, um, you know, that you would use in a group class. Um, so anyway, Amy says, have you ever tried file drawers? I have not ever tried file drawers. I do remember one of my teachers growing up having a really large file cabinet with, with these big long drawers that um, pulled out and then all of her music was, were, you know, in those file drawers. Um, so. Um, I don't know, I, I think it probably worked f good for her. Um, yes, Liz, I agree that <laughs> we could, maybe our pack rats, we collect too much music. Um, I try, and I try really hard to, you know, keep it down to things that I really think I'm going to use, um, but it's hard, you know. Um, <laughs> so, anyway, if you have any questions or comments um, about your music library, go ahead and type those in now if you're watching from Periscope. Um, if you, um, I was thinking it would be kind of fun if, um, some of you are interested, you could take a picture of your music library and post it to the Color in My Piano Facebook page. Um, so if, if any of you are on Facebook and, and you want to take a picture of your music library and type some kind of comment with it, I think it would be really fun to see those pictures. Um, so all you have to do is go to Facebook and type in Color in My Piano and I'm, sh and I'm sure the Facebook page will pull right up. Um, so just to kind of finish it off here for today. Um, thanks again for watching for this um, new experiment. I hope this will be an ongoing thing um, that we can um, do. Um, I'm hoping this will be my Monday blog posts essentially. So if you want to uh, join on Periscope again, we'll continue doing this on Monday at noon's Eastern time. Um, and if you aren't available to watch and be there in the Periscope, you can watch the replay. Um, and that video will be available within Periscope for 24 hours or after 24 hours, I will be uploading it to YouTube and posting it on my blog there. So you can watch it that way as well. Uh, thanks for those hearts, guys. <laughs> um, so 
once again, I'll just mention one last thing. If you go to my blog page, um, I'm going to turn this again. Um, so this is what my blog looks like at colorinmypiano.com. I've created a new page so you can see in the menu live. Um, this is a page where I'm going to have a YouTube playlist of the videos. It will appear here once we have some videos there. And then um, there's a link at the very bottom if you scroll down. Here's where you can go and click this little link and submit your ideas. If you have ideas of things that we could talk about in future um, broadcasts like this, um, I would love to hear from you and I would appreciate those suggestions. Um, okay. So thank you again for joining. Um, it's great to see you all. Oops, I'm so sorry, I just dropped it. <laughs> um, I hope you guys all have a wonderful teaching day um, uh, and we'll see you later online. Thank you.